Yes. Okay. So uh, today we will have, uh, let me see, we will have four topics. We'll talk about the cues first, and then we'll talk, we'll give the lecture, we will talk about the network operation and management, troubleshooting, and uh, uh, the cut over for the network. Uh, so if you got uh, any question, you can like uh, write down, you can type in the group chat and uh, if I see it, uh, I will answer your question. Okay, so uh, first let's talk about the queues. So uh, we know queues is a very important uh, technique which will be used widely in our network today. And uh, so first, why we need queues? Uh, in very old time, long time ago, the net network, they don't care about the quality. As long as they can connect it to each other, for each other, it will be okay. But uh, a lot of uh, services now is running in the network and the different services have different requirements for the network. For example, um, The real-time and non-real-time services, uh, they have different requirements. The real-time services so ask the network to uh, like, uh, 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 ask the network to forward those traffic immediately. But for the non-real-time services, maybe they, you just need to guarantee that bandwidth, it will be uh, enough. So that's why we need the queues, the quality of services, okay. So on, if you complete this course, on completion of this course, you will, able to, you will be able to describe the queues background, the queues types, and you also will be able to describe the implementation of the queues for the, of course it's a DS model queues. And also we will learn about the application scenario for the different queues function. Of course, this is a different service model queues, okay. Uh, and also we will talk about the basic configuration for the queues. And uh, at last we'll talk about uh, the uh, edge queues. So this slide will basically separate to uh, six parts. First, we'll introduce the queues, the introduction of the queues. And uh, for the traditional network, as we said before, that the network only concern about the connectivity that as long as you are connected with each other, it will be okay. So during that time, we will do the best effort. We will use the best effort way to forwarding the traffic. This is for the traditional network. So as long as, so the packet went to forward out, uh, I, I cannot guarantee that in the other end, uh, this packet will be received. And uh, use that kind of way, the best effort way to forward in the package. Sometimes for certain services, it will got problem. For example, you wanted to transmit some picture and in your side, it looks like this. And for the other side, maybe it will just a little blur, right? It looks like a little bit blur uh, because the low network quality Sometimes it will create some kind of like uh, pack loose or some uh, like create some jitter or maybe will create some delay to infect the image. So what to do, like how to guarantee like different services, how to guarantee the services. And so if we want to guarantee the services, first we needed to understand like which kind of services we have, right? Like for example, in our network, we might have live stream, we have video, we have email, we have FTP. So those kind of different services, of course they have different requirements for the network, okay? So the queues basically is designed to provide different services quality at, according to the network requirements, like different services have different requirements. So what kind of requirements they have? Okay, so basically 
all the services requirement, I mean, like all, all kinds of software, those kind of different services requirements. Basically, we can uh, divide those uh, requirements into five factors. First is the bandwidth. Different services have different requirements for the bandwidth. And also another is latency. Okay. The jitter, jitter means uh, like sometimes uh, you got a little bit latency. The latency, for example, is one millisecond, and later the latency become ten milliseconds. So th this is jit jitter, which means your latency is not stable. And the fourth is uh, packet loose rate. This is also another very important requirement for uh, for for uh, uh, for the network the services for the network. And the fourth is uh, availability. So basically, the queues can guarantee the first four factors. And then about the last, the availability for the uh, network uh, that will not be guaranteed by queues. They will, we will have some other uh, uh, technology to guarantee that the availability. So if we want to provide the, some certain services levels to provide some SRA, the, uh, we we can use three type of we can uh, how do I say this? Queues can provide three type of services. We have three services models for the queues. And first is a BE. This is a, the traditional model, which means I do nothing. I do not guarantee the services. I only doing my best, so I cannot guarantee anything. The second model for the queues is a integrated service model. So uh, the integrated services model uh, basically uh, means that uh, uh, I can uh, claim some tunnel first, some path first, and uh, later the traffic will forwarding in this path. Okay. And then the last model for the queues is uh, the differentiated services model, the DS model. And uh, this model is the most widely used in our network. So most of the time when we talk about the queues, we mean this model, the DS model. Okay, so let's look at those three models one by one. First is a BE. The BE model we already talked about before that uh, uh, the best effort only can, uh, they can do their best, but they can guarantee, cannot guarantee anything. Some, some packet may, may be just lost. Maybe they will get lost in the uh, during the forwarding. So no guarantee for the performance of the performance. And second is the integrated services. Uh, so the integrated services, uh, the the concept of the integrated services model is like this. For example, if I want to choose forwarding a, a live stream or maybe a video communication traffic to the other side, to the services, or to the, to the server, or to another client. Before forwarding the packet, I will uh, ask our, uh, uh, our required, I will request a tunnel. I will request some pass. And this pass, I will ask them to reserve, for example, one megabit bandwidth for certain uh, uh, services. And after I, after all the devices is reserved those kind of resources, I will send in the packet. So they are using some uh, protocol called the RSVP to do that, to reserve the bandwidth, to, to, to book the, the, the bandwidth. So the integrated services in the real network, uh, we were using something called MPRST to achieve that. MPRST. MPRST. And uh, in the real network, the MPRST is not widely used because it will be very complicated to um, to deploy. And the second, and secondly, for the integrated services, if I reserved one megabit bandwidth for some certain services, 
some other services, some other, other services might not be able to use this one megabits. So no longer, for example, this service, the live stream uses one megabits bandwidth or not, use it or not. The video communication will not use this one megabits. So it will create some, a little bit of waste for the, uh, for the network resources. Okay, the third model is most widely used, the, the DS model, the different services model. So the different services model basically is a hop by hop model that in each devices, they will have their own uh, queues configuration. And uh, in these devices, for, exa for example, uh, the live stream can forwarding first. And for at uh, other devices, the li live stream may be uh, forwarding a little bit late. So, um, so you can see the uh, uh, DS model is, a, um, is much more flexible. It's, a, it's, a very, 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 uh, it's much more flexible. So since the DS model um, won't use, it's unlike the integrated services model. It do not reserve certain bandwidth. So which means all the bandwidth for the interface can be fully used. So which, which means your uh, network resources will not be wasted. That's why um, most of the time that in the real network will use this type of uh, queues. So uh, about the detail of the, the DS model queues, we'll talk a little bit later. So, uh, and uh, the DS model queues, basically we have three common queues technology for the DS mo model uh, uh, QoS. The first is uh, the traffic limiting. The traffic limiting means that uh, how many traffic I can receive, how many traffic I can forward out. Okay. The second is a uh, convergency avoidance. So this technology in the DS model, in the DS model, this technology first do not avoid, do not avoid the congestion. It do not avoid the congestion. Congestion always exists. So it avoids the, the result, the consequence for the construction because some, sometimes the congestion will create some, uh, create some trouble so we want to avoid that trouble. Okay. Uh, the third techno uh, technology for the uh, DS model queues is a uh, congestion management. The congestion management basically uh, is a uh, scheduling, is a queue scheduling, which means which traffic can forward out first and which traffic can, can need forward need to wait a little while then forward out. So before we talk about the detail of the uh, DS model um, QoS. Let's look at a picture about the Q state processing. If you understand this Q state processing, it will be very easy for you to understand the different services. Okay, so, so let's look at the whole picture first. So the, uh, if we enable, if we deploy this uh, DS model QoS, the traffic will process in this way. First, uh, different type of traffic will, from, will come in from inbound services. And it will be, firstly, it will do the classification for the traffic because we have different type of traffic and how is the device is gonna know that like what kind of traffic it is. So this mode, this module, okay, traffic classification, Class, uh, tra traffic classification module will help us to classify the traffic into different uh, class. Then we'll go into the traffic policy. Okay, this traffic policy is uh, one type of uh, technology for the traffic limita limiting. So we'll go into the traffic policy. The traffic policy can limit it the traffic which came in to the devices. So when we do in traffic policing, we will have some technology called the token bucket to help us to do the counting, like how many, 
how many traffic is came in to the devices. Okay, so about the token marketing, later we'll talk about. So the CAR, these devices, uh, this, this module, which stand, CAR stands for the committed access rate. This will help us to limit the, uh, 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 limit the traffic coming to our devices. So those two module working together will talk, will call this traffic policy. Then after that, we will do the remarking. Remarking means at first we classify, we, 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 we divided the traffic into different class. We classification, we classify the uh, different uh, uh, traffic. Then we need to mark the traffic. For example, this is a video. When it came in, when it goes through the traffic classification, the devices know, okay, this is a video, but I need to give this video traffic uh, some mark. Okay, we need to mark this video traffic. So if we mark this video traffic, later one, when it is sending to the other devices, these other devices can based on this mark to know that, okay, this is a video or maybe this is a voice, okay. And after I do the remarking of the uh, traffic, it will go into the, uh, to do the forwarding. This other processing means I will check in the, for example, I will check in the looting table or I will check in the Mac table. I will do the forwarding. Okay, this is other processing, including like, uh, for example, I wanted to filter some package or all those kind of uh, processing is in this other processing. So go through other processing, the traffic will decide, okay, I need to go out from which kind of certain interface. I would decide like how, where I can go, go out. So when it go out, it will go through some other module. The first is congestion avoidance. The congestion avoidance can help the traffic, can, can decide whether the traffic is allowed to go into the certain queue or not. Okay. So this is the congestion avoidance. And uh, if this package is allowed to go into some queue, so the, 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 the package will wait in this queue. It will wait in this queue, in those queue. So, so uh, and uh, if the package won't go out from, uh, go out from the queue, from different queue, it will go in through the congestion management, this module first. So this module will schedule in the queue, like which queue uh, can forward first, can go out first, which queue need to wait and go out later. So this is congestion management. And uh, after, uh, based on, uh, after the packet is al allowed to forward out from the queue, it will go, in, go through the last module, the traffic shipping. The traffic shipping means like uh, if I want to go out, I also can limit the speed, limit the traffic. Like for example, I only allowed one megabit per second is forward out. Okay, one megabit packet is forward out per second. Okay, so this is the whole processing of the uh, queues. Okay, it's like this. So this picture is uh, very important. If the student wants to understand the cues, they must understand this processing. And if they understand processing, cues is not difficult. Okay, okay so about the quiz, uh, let's uh, check, okay, which of the following model are provided by the cues? This is a multi answer question. So uh, the first A and B and C, the first three will be the three model for the queues. Okay, uh, about summary, let's uh, just pass. And uh, let's look at the second, um, the second uh, topic, the second part, the traffic classification and uh, uh, remarking, the marking, okay. So as we know, uh, we talked about the queue state processing before, and we know the traffic traffic went came to the uh, devices 
first it need to be classified into different class, into different type of traffic. So we need to, 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 to classify them. So how to classify the traffic? How to classify them? Does the devices understand the application? Does the devices know this is a video, this is voice, this is date? Most time it do not. They cannot understand the, uh, the, the uh, they cannot understand like with this packet is a video packet or voice packet. It will be difficult, but uh, some device can, but most device cannot. So we must have some way to classify them. So this is why we need to use the classification. And after we classify the, if we have some like way to classify the traffic, as we said, we, we need market. We need to uh, uh, mark the packet. So after we mark the packet, other devices will be easily to know, okay, this is a video traffic, or this is a voice traffic, this is a data traffic. Okay, so how to classify the traffic, how to mark the traffic? First, we need to have some uh, idea. We, we need to know some uh, concept is behavior aggregate class classification. Okay, this concept. So what is this? What is a BA classification? Okay. Uh, first, when we talk about the BA classification, we need to know where is the BA, the behavior, uh, where do we write this uh, behavior? Okay, so we write a behavior, we put a, this behavior mark in those three fields. Those three field, field. For the VLAN packet, we will put the behavior mark in the dot uh, 1P field. Okay, in the VLAN, we know there will be three bits field we call it as a priority, PIR, uh, PRI priority. And uh, in the MPRS packet, uh, in the P MPRS header, we have a field, also a three bits field, we call it the EXP, EXP. Uh, and we will put the behavior mark in this EXP. And in the IP packet, we have, most of the time we will use the DSAP, but we, actually we have another, uh, another um, field called the uh, IPP, IP precedence. But uh, basically we'll use the DSAP uh, to put this behavior mark, okay. So those kind of uh, field, those three field uh, will be used to, to put the behavior, will used to, to uh, mark the different uh, uh, services. So those field, those three field, the, 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 uh, in those three field, we have some certain value, we call it the priority, which will be used as a uh, behavior mark. And this priority is what we call the external priority, external priority. And uh, when the packet go into the devices, since we have different type of priority, we have different way of the priority. We have this dot one P priority. We have this EXP priority. We have this DSAP priority. Different priority, they exist in different header and they, the value might be different. So we must mapping into the inner priority. We have some mapping table here. So this inner priority can unify different uh, external priority. So it will be easy for the devices pr processing the packet. So besides the inner priority, when the external priority went mapping to the inner priority, it will also uh, mapping to some other uh, value called color. So the, the inner priority, it will be used to decide whether this packet should forward out first or should forward out second. But uh, the color, this field, this color means whether I should uh, drop this packet or not. We have some drop priority for the packet. 
So when the device is going, when packet going to the devices, it will be mapping based on those priority field, based on those different field, they were mapping into the inner priority and the color, the services color and the, uh, uh, the services class and the color. And when it forward out, those services and the color will from the uh, inner priority to a mapping back to the external priority. Okay, like this. Okay, so let's look at the the external priority first. So uh, for the VLAN package, uh, in the uh, VLAN header, there will be three bits uh, field called the priority field, the PR, PRI field. So in this field, we will, uh, we will put the external priority here. So this PRI uh, field is three bits long. So the value we can put is from zero to seven. So for the VLAN package, we can uh, divide the VLAN traffic into eight uh, priority from zero to seven. Okay. And for the MPS, it is similar. In the MPS, we have, in MPS header, we have some field called the EXP field. And also this field is where we put the external priority. Okay, and the value range is also from zero to seven. So we can divide it, the MPS pack it into seven, uh, into eight priority from zero to seven. And last is uh, the IP package, the IP package. The IP package, uh, we will put the external priority value in the field called the TOS. The TOS is a eight, eight bits long uh, field, eight bits long field. But for the most of the time, we will only use the first three bits or the first six bits to carry, to contain the external priority. So for the IP package, when we're trying to define the external priority in the IP package, we actually have two standards. First is what we call the IP precedence, the IPP. Okay, so for the IPP, the value is from zero to seven. Another standard uh, for the external priority in the IP packet is a DSCP. The DSCP value is from zero to 63. So we can say the DSCP actually can describe the priority much more um, accurate because we can divide it, we can classify the traffic in, in, into 64, uh, uh, 64 different, 64 levels. So uh, the DSAP value will be most widely used when we're trying to use the IP packet to mark the traffic. Okay, uh, and here is uh, some, uh, uh, some mapping between the external priority. Some uh, uh, priority, they, they actually uh, have in, in the same level. For example, the, in the VLAN packet, the, the, uh, the uh, dot one P value, the priority value, pr uh, priority value is seven. Basically the priority is equal to the MPS EXP value seven. It's equal to the IP precedence seven. And, uh, uh, and for the DSAP, uh, the VLAN priority uh, seven basically will equal to the DSAP value from six, 56 to 63. So, and this value actually have a name. They have some uh, well-known well -known DSAP value. Uh, first is a CS7. Okay, so in the uh, real network, normally when we put the DSAP into CS7, into CS7, it means this packet have the same priority with the VLAN dot one P7 and have the same priority with this EXP7 and IPP7. Okay, so uh, the CS7, this DSAP name, uh, 
the DSAP value is 56. Okay, so 56, the DSAP value 56, this value have a DSAP name is CS7. Because uh, the people will much more easy to uh, remember the name. So sometimes we'll just use name to, uh, for, for the DSAP, we'll not use the real DSAP value. Most of the time we'll just use the name to define the traffic. And also other is same, like uh, the other six, 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 they, they, those three number have the same value. And in the DSAP, most time we will use a six, six, uh, and define this traffic have the same priority with those packets. And the rest is similar, rest is similar. You can see the EF, EF is, only, uh, is same with five, and the BE is uh, same with zero. And in the DSAP value, there will be some special uh, 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 DSAP name is uh, AF. AF. The AF stands for the assured forwarding, which means those, can, those kind of packet can guarantee to forward out, but maybe not uh, for uh, in, in a very efficient way, but it uh, eventually it will fall out. So this is AF. This is AF. So for the uh, AF, we need to uh, talk a little bit uh, uh, I will, uh, about this AF concept. We'll talk a little bit later. We'll talk about the uh, uh, the, uh, the job rate, the job priority. Okay, so let's look at the services class first. And, uh, and we, we, we already know that uh, this is the external priority. And uh, when the external priority, when the packet going to the devices, the devices will mapping the external priority into inner priority, which means the services class. The service class, class is the inner priority. Okay, so inner, Priority, we have uh, eight inner priority from zero to seven. And those inner priority, this services class, this inner priority, they, they are basically the same thing. We also can, uh, have name from the BE to the CS7. Okay, this name is not DSAP name. Okay, this is a uh, inner priority, priority name. Okay, it is just some name here. Okay, we just got some name here. And uh, so it's like this. And uh, uh, so the, the priority for the uh, inner, for the services class is like this. The CS7 has the highest priority and the BE has the lower, lo lo lowest priority in the services class. Okay, by by default, we define the services class in this way. But when, we, when you do the deployment, you want the BE as a higher priority, uh, in, uh, as a higher priority for the services class is also okay, but uh, normally we will define the, we will define the CS7 as a high priority for the services class. Okay. And uh, besides the services class, we also have some other concept is color. Okay, so when the external um, priority went mapping to uh, map uh, into uh, mapping into the inner classes, they will also uh, decide like which color this this packet have. So basically we, we have three color, green, yellow, and uh, red. Green, yellow, and red. So the green, yellow, and the red means the drop rate is a drop rate. It's like this. The green color means your drop rate the, the, the will be, you will not have a lot of packet being dropped. Okay, the yellow means you have the uh, middle chance that uh, to drop the packet. And the, if your packet uh, color is red, it means 
that uh, your packet have a the high, high have a very high chance uh, to being dropped this packet. Okay, so uh, for the color, when we do the mapping, the DSAP actually um, they define this DSAP value. They actually define uh, the, the uh, different services into different colors. For example, uh, for example, the DSAP value have some uh, some value called the AF, the AF value. So the AF value, we can define the AF value into AF4, AF3, AF2, AF1, those four AF value. And in different um, class of the AF value, they also have different drop rate. Okay. The second number, one, two, three, actually is define uh, your um, drop rate. So the AF1 basically will be automatically mapped into the AF4 and the color is green. And the AF42, uh, it will automatically map into the AF4. The AF4 is a service class. And the two will automatically map into the yellow. So AF43 is similar. AF4 is, uh, will be mapped into the service class is uh, uh, AF4. Like uh, this, we automatically map into this in the class, uh, in the priority, and uh, the uh, last number three will automatically map this packet into red. Oh, okay, so it's like this. This mapping. Okay, so uh, if we wanted to map the, if we wanted to classify the uh, uh, the, uh, the traffic, first we needed to uh, define the traffic. We needed to uh, classify. Okay, if we want to like put a different value, different DSAP value, or maybe different uh, uh, dot 1P value into different traffic, first we need to classify our traffic. So how to classify our traffic? We will we need to use some tools called the traffic policy. So the traffic policy uh, will, will be like this. They have two modules for the traffic policy. First is a traffic classifier, and the second is a traffic behavior. The traffic classifier uh, can define the traffic based on the ACL. Okay, based on the ACL, we can define the traffic, define the traffic. And after the traffic is being defined, we can use the traffic behavior to mark the traffic, to mark the traffic, okay. So, um, so, the, uh, so the traffic classification, uh, actually we can uh, divide the traffic, classific traffic classification into uh, two types. Uh, first is uh, the mountain field classification. Okay, the mountain field classification basically means that uh, uh, we will use the ACL. We will use uh, the five tuple to classify the traffic. Okay, this is called the mountain uh, called the mountain field classification. Okay, so this mountain field classification basically will be put at the edge of the DS field. The DS field stands for the uh, DS field. Okay, D differential services field, the, the, the DS field. So, um, so, uh, so when the packet first, it came into the DS field, the DS network, the QS network, uh, the edge devices will help uh, to classify the, the traffic. Okay, and uh, after that, the inner devices, the DS node, the DS node, the inner DS node, the devices will only based on uh, the DSAP value or maybe based on the 
IPP, the uh, .1P, the EXP, those kind of uh, uh, value to classify the traffic. Okay, here's a little bit of configuration, uh, like how to do uh, the conf configuration for the, uh, for the uh, mountain field classification. So we can use the classifier first. We can, if match, match the traffic based on like the ACL, the VLAN ID, uh, et cetera. Okay. And then we can do in the traffic behavior. So since we are using the classification, uh, if match to de define, to classify the traffic, then we need to remark it. We can use the traffic behavior, this kind of tools to remark, to remark the packet. Remark the packet. And then we can combine the classifier and the behavior together, bind them together, and we can create a traffic policy and we'll put uh, the traffic policy under some interface. We can deploy the traffic policy under some interface. So when traffic is into in going to the devices and go out from the devices, we can make going to or maybe go out from the devices, we, we can remark the package. We can give this package some DSAP value or EXP value or priority value. Okay. Okay, and here also we can do a little bit configuration for the uh, BA classification. Okay. So the BA classification, uh, uh, first, since we have, a, when the packet sending to the devices, send to the devices, and this packet maybe contains a VLAN header, we contain the MPS header, we maybe also contain the IP header. So in different header, we maybe have different uh, uh, priority value, we have different BA value, the Q's value, Q's priority. So we, uh, so in the interface, we can define that uh, we will use which kind of value to, 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 to classify the traffic. Okay, we can based on the VLAN, based on DSAP, or maybe based on MPRS, EXP header to define the traffic, okay. So, uh, and also some other configuration we can do in the BA classification is the mapping table. We, we can uh, adjust the mapping table. Okay, so by default, the mapping table uh, is like, uh, like it will be like this. The mapping table will be like this. Okay, for example, the, the 802, uh, uh, for example, the uh, the priority value, the VLAN value is seven, and uh, automatically it will mapping into the uh, into the CS seven uh, this inner priority. But we can change it. Okay, we can change it based on this map table. For example, in the later for the uh, VLAN priority value. If the in input DSAP uh, uh, VLAN priority value is seven, and uh, I want them to put into the uh, inner priority is CS six, then you can configure it here. Okay, so this is the map table we can do the configuration. But most of the time we just leave this alone, the map table. Do not adjust the map table like in the normal in the, in, the, in 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 real network unless you you are facing some very special requirement. Okay, here's some uh, configuration and some quiz to enforce. First, the mountain field classification uh, classification is generally deployed in the inbound direction of the DS edge node. Is true. And the second question: Which of the following parameter are used to mark the Q as priority of the data packet? So we can say all of the all of them can be used. 
to to uh, to to mark uh, to to be used as a, a, a parameters to mark the queues. Okay, so let's look at uh, the uh, the third part, the traffic limiting technology. The traffic limiting technology, we have two type of uh, traffic limiting uh, technology, the traffic policy and the traffic shaping. So those two tools is all, uh, are all can be used to control the traffic to limit the, the uh, traffic speed. Okay, the traffic policy means that uh, uh, most of the time the traffic policy is used to monitor the traffic entering the devices to ensure that the network resources are not be abused. And the uh, traffic shaping, most time it, it will be used to control the rate of the outgoing packet so that the packet is ascending at a, a even rate. So those two tools for the traffic limiting, uh, they have different using scenarios. So no matter we use we use the traffic parsing or we use the traffic shaping, the first question we need to uh, answer is uh, how can we measure like how many traffic is into came into our devices or going out from the devices? We must have some tools to measure the traffic speed, right? So that is what we call the token bucket. Okay, so this token bucket technology will be the uh, foundation of the uh, traffic crossing and the traffic shaping. So first we need to uh, introduce a little bit of the uh, token market first. So uh, the token market basically we can divide the token market, token market into three types. First is a single rate, single packet, a uh, single bucket. Okay, so this is the first type of the bucket, the single rate, single bucket. The single rate means I only have one rate. It's what we call the CIR. CIR is called the committed information rate. So in the uh, inside, uh, the, the CIR means in one second, in one second, how many token were put into the bucket? Okay, were put into the bucket. And the bucket have a size called a C called a C, we call this size called the CBS, the committed uh, burst size, the CBS. So we have a CIR and we have a CBS. Here is a little bit of question that we already have the CIR, we already know that in one second we will put how many packets into the, uh, we will already know in the one second how many tokens will be in, put into the, the bucket? <coughs> Why the bucket must have a size, must have the committed burst rate, <coughs> burst size. Why we need this? Why we need the size of the bucket? Okay. So we, we must understand that uh, when, the, when we uh, uh, forward in the package, when we forward in the package, we do not want uh, the, the traffic will forwarding like this, will forwarding like this. Okay, we want to even the speed, like in, the, in one second. We do not want uh, this traffic looks like this, looks like this. There will be like uh, uh, a great burst, for example, and then there will be no uh, token for me to forward to forward the packet. I do. We do not want this. So we can use uh, the CBS to uh, to make the traffic forward out much more evenly. Okay. So it's like this. Uh, so the packet, uh, the the uh, the token packet for the single rate single packet, it will be working like this. Based on the CIR. The devices know in one second how many tokens I totally need put into the bucket. For example, 1,000 tokens 
in the one second need to put into the bucket. Uh, bucket. But I cannot just, uh, in, for, for, for example, in the first, uh, in the first uh, 100 milliseconds, If I put like uh, one thousand bucket, uh, one thousand token into the bucket, and uh, if there will be some traffic, is uh, have some burst. Okay, so in the one minute second, they will use all the token. So in this one hundred millisecond, the network speed is not. 1k per second. Actually, it will be 10k per second. Because in 100 milliseconds, I already use all the, all the uh, 1000 token. So normally we were thinking, okay, the CIR is uh, one kilo per second. But uh, if we look much more detail, we will see that in this, 100 millisecond, the speed actually is 10 kilo per second. So it will got problem. And the token market will be doing like this. So first in the first 100 milliseconds, I will only put 100 token into it. Okay, and if the packet afford the maximum speed not the maximum speed. In this one minute, 100 millisecond, the total token they can use is 100. And in the second, um, in the second 100 millisecond, okay, in the second this uh, times, uh, in, in, in second time slot, actually it's a lot of different time, time slot. In the se second time slot, we'll put another 100 token into this bucket. So in the second uh, 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 time slot, the total packet it can forward out is also 100. So we can like divide this, uh, we can use this bucket, okay, we can use this bucket into uh, two different, put, put those uh, bucket into different like uh, time slot. Okay, 100 and 100 uh, token. So we, uh, we will not just uh, immediately put all the token into the bucket. Okay, like every 100 millisecond we'll put 100 token. So, when, so in this way, when traffic forward out, the traffic will much more, uh, when went forward out, the speed will much more evenly it will not going like this. It may be just going forward, in, forward out like this. So it will not impact other traffics. So that is why we need the bucket. But the single rate, single bucket have some uh, using scenario limitation. Okay. Okay, uh, okay, and this, uh, about the, uh, so about the single rate, single battery, they have some um, shortage, when, have some uh, shortage when, when it is being used. There are some uh, using scenario that um, maybe when you using this single rate, single bucket, it will create some problem. Okay, for example, the, this traffic is like this, the traffic, uh, is a plus shape packet. The plus shape packet, it's like this. So in every time there will be a plus, the traffic plus, okay, P-R-U-S-E, that, is that how to, uh, not that plus, I, I, you, you understand the plus, right? Every time there will be some burst, okay. So there will be a, uh, uh, a plus shape, okay, the plus shape. 
Okay, so in this kind of uh, traffic, if we use a single rate, single bucket, actually it will create some problem. For example, I only, also the, we will uh, define every 100 millisecond is, will be as a time slot. And uh, in this 100 millisecond, I will put uh, 100 uh, token. Okay, in the second, uh, in the second uh, time slot, we'll put another 100. So it will got, got problem. For example, this traffic, uh, it is plus shape traffic. In every time, every time when it fold out, they will fold out 200, uh, 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 200 size package. But since uh, the, the token totally you have is 100 megabit or 100 token so another 100 token well, another 100 uh, packet they will not uh, they will not assign uh, they will not get the token they will not get the token so those packet if they not get the token the bucket will give those packet a red color okay the, the packet got the token, it will put into green color, but the packet do not get the token, it will put into the red color. The red color by default, it will be, the packet will be dropped. So, which means, like in every time slot, uh, uh, there will be half the, of the packet is being dropped. Half the packet is being dropped. Okay. so. Uh, so, w which means that uh, uh, if the traffic is like this way, eventually, like uh, your traffic maybe is only like one one kilo per second, or, or, or one kilobits per second. But uh, if we use the single rate, single bucket, uh, the speed might drop to five hundred uh, bits per second. Okay, it might create some uh, a situation like this. So, which means a single rate, single bucket, uh, this kind of bucket cannot, uh, how to access, cannot so, uh, uh, cannot be used like uh, if the traffic have sometimes have temporarily burst. Okay, have temporarily burst that the burst is very have a, a very a big burst. Okay, so if those kind of traffic, uh, we cannot use this single rate, single bucket. Okay, we cannot use this kind of bucket. So if we're facing um, uh, uh, some um, temporary burst traffic, which means this, this traffic sometimes will have some burst and sometimes it will be just a forward, like in the normal, uh, 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 normal speed, but sometimes speed will reach very high. Okay, if we're facing this kind of a traffic, we can use a, the, uh, another type of a bucket we call a single rate two bucket. The single rate two bucket is working like this way. They have two buckets. First is what we call the C bucket, another called is the E bucket. The C is stand for the CBS, the commit, commit C. The E is stand for the Excise, excise uh, E, the excise burst rate. So this is E bucket. So what is uh, the working principle of this uh, single rate two bucket? It's working like this way. Uh, so uh, the uh, at the first the, the token market the token based on the CIR based on the committed uh, uh, rate, uh, the devices will put a token into the C bucket, okay. And uh, if this C bucket is full, for example, this CBS is 100, and the uh, the exceeded token, the exceeded token will be uh, overflow. The the token will overflow to the E bucket. Okay. So for example, the first 100 milliseconds. Uh, the the devices put 100 token into the bucket C, but in the first 100 millisecond, in the first time slot, 
the uh, there's no traffic came in. So in in the second time slot, the the bucket C, the C bucket is still full, but the devices will put the token. It will still put a token into the back C. So in this time, they will the 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 token will be overflowed to the bucket E. So which means in 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 the second slot, for example, this token bucket E we have like fifty. Uh, the size is fifty. So which means in the second slot, maybe we will have totally one hundred fifty uh, token here. So if the first time there's a no traffic came in, no problem, no problem. And as in the second slot, suddenly there will be some burst, some traffic came in and the traffic uh, uh, is burst into 150 or maybe 130. But it is okay because during the second time slot, I will totally have 150 um, token in, 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 the, in the bucket. So if you have like a temporary burst, those single rate two buckets um, can help the devices to follow the, the traffic. Okay, so this is the second bucket. Okay, in the second bucket, if you got the token from the bucket C, the devices will put uh, the green cutter into your, into your traffic. And if your traffic is, uh, if the C to uh, bucket is uh, empty and the traffic will try to take the token from the bucket E, and if you got the token from the bucket E, the devices will uh, we, 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 we'll know that your color is yellow, okay? And if you can, cannot get the token from the bucket C or bucket E, then uh, the devices will put the red color in, in, into your, will mark the red color, okay? And uh, so this is for the temporary burst, like temporary exceeded uh, uh, traffic. And sometimes that uh, uh, in some network using scenario that you, you always want the traffic uh, is exceeded. Okay, for example, in, in, in the, in the uh, family network, in the family network, like uh, if you wanted to, um, uh, for example, you, you, you buy some uh, uh, internet uh, services from the ISP, right? The ISP will give you uh, like uh, the speed, for example, you rent the 100 uh, MB uh, bandwidth for your home, for your family, for your home network. So this 100 megabits actually means the maximum speed you're gonna have, the maximum speed you're gonna have. And uh, maybe the ISP only guarantee your 15 megabits, but the maximum you can get is uh, 100 uh, megabits. So if the network is congested, your speed will uh, drop into 15 megabits. So this 50 megabits actually is a guaranteed value and 100, meg 100 megabits actually is exceeded value. It, this is the maximum value. So our devices must have some way to, 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 to how do I say, to solve this kind of situation. So that's, that is where we use this two rate two bucket. Two rate two bucket. So the two rate two bucket have two buckets. The bucket P, P stands for the peak, and the bucket C, C stands for the commit. Okay, so the P bucket and C bucket, they have two speed, two rate. The two, uh, P bucket, uh, the token will be uh, inputted in the PIR speed, the peak information rate, and the C bucket will based on the CR to input the token. 
So if the packet, when the packet came in, okay, it will compare if the packet is larger than the packet P, I will put this um, traffic into red color. And if the traffic size is a smaller than the bucket P and is a larger than bucket C, we will put it into the yellow. And if uh, the the packet came in and the size is smaller than the bucket C, and we will put it into the uh, uh, green. And uh, the yellow, for example, we always allow yellow to forward. Okay, so which means the maximum speed, for example, 100 megabits per second. This is, this traffic is for the yellow color, is for the yellow color. And if the network is congested, okay, I can only allow the green color to pass and uh, it will drop to the 50 megabits. So this 100 megabits is a PIR, is a PIR. Okay, this 15 megabits is a CIR. Okay, if the traffic is, if the network is no congestion, you can always uh, forward out based on the 100 megabits, based on the PR, based on, because I always allow the yellow to pass. And if the uh, network is congestion, and I will, the, the, the green is allowed to pass if the network is congestion. So the, job, the, the, the speed will drop into 15 megabits. So this is why we need to use a two rate to back it and what is the working principle of that. Okay, so this is uh, about the token bucket. Okay, and here uh, let me answer some question about the token bucket first. Uh, let me read the question. Um, first uh, question is uh, uh, for analyze tokens are allocate, allocated by the packet or by um, byte. Uh, I ask you as long as the uh, marking is down in the packet um, basis. Uh, for my understanding, for my understanding, uh, the token is based on uh, the bits. The token is based on the bits because when you doing the configuration, you can see based on the bits you you, you set the speed. Okay, based on bits you set the speed. Uh, the second question is uh, CBS, EBS, PBS normally have a default size. How can I de determine if I should increase it or decrease it? Or it is defined uh, implicitly as per CI or PIR. Okay, about uh, w w normally when you're doing the configuration, like you can. Uh, like set the size of the PBS or CBS. Okay, by default you can set set that. So first, uh, to set the size of the PBS and or maybe the CBS, those two buckets, uh, it will be actually it will be very difficult to to, to calculate the accurate value because the traffic you fold out the uh, the traffic shape is different. The traffic shape is different. The traffic have different shape. Some traffic is uh, like uh, very normal, uh, like they, they can fold out very evenly. Okay, and uh, some traffic, it will be like this. It is a plus shape traffic. So for the PBS and the CBS, normally we will just use the uh, default value, the default value. The Huawei, uh, uh, value is like this. Uh, the the PIR uh, divided in divided eight, it will be PBS, the size of the PBS, which means uh, the eight means that uh, in the one second, it will be divided into eight time slot. Okay, this is a slaughter first, which means it says 
one to five milliseconds. Oh, sorry, not. So normally we recommend it that we we use the default value. Okay. Uh, we divide divided uh, one millisecond into eight slots. So uh, one minute, one second into um, eight time slots. So each time slot it will um, stand for one hundred and twenty five milliseconds. And in this uh, second, uh, so if we set the PIR, for example, is a one megabit per second. So in the first uh, time slot, it, it will be one hundred. Uh, 25k. Uh, uh, this is size. This is size for the uh, bucket. Okay. And also, uh, if we use the two rated two bucket, uh, those PIR and the CIR they can set set separately, and the size also can be set separately. Okay. Uh, and there are third question uh, when dealing with the sub interface, uh, there is only one set of the bucket for the whole interface, or there is one for every sub interface. Uh, actually, that we will talk about in the HQs, but the answer will be uh, each sub interface you will have one uh, separately uh, uh, token bucket. Uh, okay, let's continue. Okay, so now we have we we, we have the token market to calculate to measure the, um, the 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 traffic. Now we can uh, use the traffic parsing or traffic shipping those two tools to limit the traffic. So what is traffic parsing? The traffic parsing is very simple. We set the CIR or maybe the PIR. Here we only uh, take a, use the example of uh, use CI as an example. We can also uh, the PR working in the same same way. If the speed is exceeded the CR or maybe exceeded the PR, the exceeded packet will be dropped. Will be dropped. So this is a traffic policy. Okay, the traffic policy means if the speed if the traffic uh, is a uh, uh, the traffic speed is exceeded as the, the CIR, PIR, the exceeded packet will be dropped. This is the traffic policy. Okay. So the traffic policy can be deployed in the inbound or outbound. This is also okay. Inbound and outbound, we all can deploy the traffic policy. So we can, and the traffic policy, uh, when we deploy the traffic policy, when we configure the traffic policy, we will use some uh, tools called the CAR, the car ex uh, uh, access rate, car access rate. This car access rate is for the router. And for the switch, we have another uh, tools. We have another tools called the LR, the line rate. But uh, those two things are, are same thing. They are same thing, just different name. Okay, the working principle are same. So the CR very simple. After we are uh, like uh, classify, we, we 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 classify the traffic, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, the packet will go through the token market. So when we set the uh, like uh, the, the the CIR for the, the the for the token market, and if the bucket do not have, uh, uh, the bucket will uh, color the packet. Okay, so. We will color the packet, the packet into three colors, yellow, green, and uh, red. By default, if the token packet color your packet into the red color, the traffic policy, the CAR, these tools will drop it, will, will discard the packet. If the token packet color your traffic into green, by default, it will forward. And the yellow, it will do the remark and forward. Okay, it will do the remark and do, do the forward. This remark means, for example, at the very beginning, uh, your, your, your traffic is being marked as an EF. EF means efficient, efficient forward. It should forward 
in a in very efficient way, it should boil out first. Boil out first. But uh, if we put the color into yellow, we can remark this packet into AF, for example, AF3. So which means those kind of packet maybe will forward the forward priority will be a little bit lower, lower than yeah. Okay, so this is uh, for the traffic policy. So the traffic policy is a unit, uh, 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 application scenario most of the time is just inbound. Inbound, okay. This is a, m most of the time it will widely use. But if you want to use in out outbound, this is also okay, but most of the time it's inbound. Okay, a little bit of configuration. Uh, th this part will just uh, pass. Okay. About configuration, uh, you, uh, I, I guess you can check it uh, after the, the class. Okay, then let's introduce uh, traffic shaping. Uh, so the traffic shaping, the working principle is uh, different with uh, the policy. The traffic shaping uh, is, can work in like this way. For example, we also uh, setting a CIR. Okay, and uh, if the packet, if the packet uh, is exceeded the, C, uh, the CIR, okay, the, the speed is, uh, uh, is too high, and uh, it, it is uh, more than the CIR, so this exceeded packet will be, uh, will be saved in the, will be put into the buffer, into the uh, device's buffer first, and maybe in the second, uh, in the second time slot, I have uh, an, uh, the, the, the we have we have some um, uh, we have some uh, how do I say this? we have uh, some other token in the second slot. Then uh, those uh, those buffered packet can forward out. Okay, this those buffered for, uh, packet can forward out. Okay, so this is a traffic shipping. So traffic shipping basically can uh, make uh, our uh, can can make the uh, uh, the the traffic much more uh, evenly. Okay, it will not uh, forwarding like this. It will will forwarding like uh, uh, this will be forward much more uh, uh, evenly the traffic. But for the traffic shipping, we actually have a little bit uh, um, uh, problem. Uh, okay. Because the, 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 if we use the traffic shaping, uh, actually it will be uh, create uh, some extra um, latency. Because some traffic, some packet, it should, should fall out in the first time slot, but I save it in the buffer, and uh, it fall out in the second time slot. So we can say we have some latency is uh, some delay is being created. If we use the traffic shaping, so uh, which means if you if your uh, traffic is uh, if your services is uh, uh, latency sensitive traffic, okay, it is a real time services. Do not uh, recommend it to use the traffic shaping. Okay. So here is a little uh, a little bit like uh, uh, traffic shaping uh, working principle, like for example. Um, if the packet is not, cannot be forward out, it will go into the queue first. And then it will wait the second time slot and trying to forward out. But uh, there's something you can set that uh, uh, you, you actually can uh, configure that even uh, the packet got the, the, the even the, the, uh, the packet is being colored as a red, you can also forward out. This is also okay. This, uh, like you can do some configuration. Okay, but most of the time it will be working like this for traffic shipping. If I cannot go out, I will go into the buffer and uh, wait a while then uh, forward out. Okay, this is traffic shipping. So uh, traffic shipping only can be deployed in the outbound outbound direction, okay. Uh, this is a lim li limitation for the devices, okay. For, uh, because most of the time the congestion will be, uh, 
what happened when the traf uh, when, when the packet go out? So the traffic shipping can only be deployed in the outbound direction for the interface. Okay, about uh, configuration, we just uh, pass. Okay, a little bit of quiz. Uh, traffic shipping cache ex uh, exceeds traffic by default, and the traffic parsing discuss the exceeded traffic by default. Um, yeah, this is true. And second, how many modes of the token marketing are used to measure the traffic? So there will be three uh, type of the modes, uh, single rate, single bucket, single rate, two bucket, and two rate, two bucket. Uh, so using scenario will be a little bit different. Okay. Okay, our summary we pass. And then let's look at the congestion avoidance technology. Okay, so uh, so why we need to use uh, the con congestion avoidance? And to answer that question, we need to understand uh, what is congestion. So congestion basically means that uh, the packet can cannot go out. The packet cannot go out. For example, when when the incoming interface is a 100 megabit and the outgoing interface is a 10 uh, um, uh, 10 megabits per second, then it will create some congestion. Or maybe, uh, or maybe uh, like uh, like uh, two interface in, one interface out, it will also create some congestion. Okay. So if we have some congestion, what things will happen? So the traffic congestion have the following adverse impact on the network traffic. First. It creates some delay and jitter. And secondly, second, it will uh, create some packet of transmission, for example, the TCP traffic. And the traffic also traffic congestion will lower the network throughput and damage the network resources and force the intensive uh, traffic congestion will consume a large number of network resources. So uh, it will also create some, uh, 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 it will also will cause uh, the system breakdown. So this is the impact of the congestion. So to solve the, those kind of impact, to solve those kind of impact, we have two ways. First is congestion avoidance. Second is uh, congestion management. Let's look at the convergency avoidance first. Uh, okay, so first, why, where do we, why, how is the device know? How does the device know that this device is occurred the congestion? How does the device know that? Very simple. Normally, the devices will forward out the packet immediately. The packet will go through the queue and immediately go out. Goes through the queue and immediately go out. So it will be like this. But if the packet, if the devices is occur some congestion, the packet right now I cannot forward out. So where I should put the packet? Where is this packet wait? It will be wait in the queue. The packet will be wait in the queue will be waiting in the queue, in, in the queue. So if there's a some packet will be waiting in the queue, the devices know, okay, this devices have some congestion, have some congestion, okay. Now, since if the congestion happened, the devices or the packet will be waiting in the queue and the queue, this has length, have maximum length. This queue is, is not like, uh, uh, it, it cannot always put a packet into into the queue. The queue has the, the that is the maximum length. So, what if what if the congestion is always existed, and the queue the the packet is always waiting in the queue, and the the packet will be uh, uh, you, you, there will be more and more packet in the queue. And if this happened, if this thing happened. 
then what? Then the packet is no longer nowhere to go. So the packet will be dropped. The packet will drop because you, there's no room for, for the queue. The only thing you can do is drop the packet. You cannot wait. There, there are no place you can wait. So by default, we were doing something called the tail drop. The tail drop means the queue is no place, no room for the rest packet. We can do the, we need to do the tail drop. Okay, so this is a by default, the default behavior of the congestion avoidance, the tail drop. About the second two uh, 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 congestion avoidance technology, we'll talk a little bit later. We'll talk about the tail drop first. As we said, the tail drop is, means that there's no room for the queue. The queue is full. The only thing you can do is drop. So the tail drop, if we use tail drop, they will create some problem. First is called the global TCP synchronization. It's a very old concept, the TCP synchronization. Uh, since uh, TCP have some concept uh, called the flow window. Okay. So the flow window mostly it working like this way. It will detecting that uh, uh, whether the network is congestion or not, a congestion or not. And if there is create some congestion by the default, the TCP will drop to, the TCP flow window will drop to zero then it will start to uh, 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 start to forward, start to increase the speed again. So every time uh, the, it's found out the network is congested, uh, the TCP will, uh, speed will drop to zero. The uh, uh, flow window will uh, become zero. Okay, so maybe that will be different. Uh, there will be a lot of TCP traffic in the real network. Okay. So, Maybe the first TCP, second and third TCP uh, 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 traffic is all, is uh, speed is increasing, 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 increasing based on the flow window. And uh, suddenly three of them, they all find the network is congested, right? Because the net network congested, all the traffic, all TV, TCP traffic will know that. All TCP traffic will know that. So they will, uh, uh, they, they will uh, drop their, they will shrink their flow window together into zero. They will shrink the flow window together. Then they will uh, st uh, increase speed together, will increase speed together. So it will create the global TCP synchronization. So at the very beginning, they maybe the, they are uh, 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 increase in the different sp uh, speed, but suddenly they will all drop to zero. Different, all the TCP traffic will drop to zero. Then started to increase the speed again, then drop to zero. Then start to increase speed and drop to zero. So this kind of behavior will create the first problem is your network will uh, timely We'll, we'll, we'll have the congestion uh, like uh, uh, timely, right? Periodically, we'll have the congestion. So it will, will make your uh, services just very, uh, um, like it will, it will just make you feel that your, your network is, uh, uh, is uh, okay for a while and uh, not okay for in, 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 in later. Okay, so this is a first disadvantage for the tail job, global TCP synchronization. And second is undefined, undifferentiated uh, drop, which means some uh, packet maybe is a key packet. It's a key date. And some packet, it, when it wait in the queue, maybe it's a non-key date. And I do not want those key date is being dropped. I want them to forward. I want them to wait in the queue. Uh, so if we use a tail job, we, we cannot do that because uh, no matter uh, whether you are key or not, as long as the queue is full, it will be dropped. So those are the two disadvantages for the tail job. So the uh, congestion avoidance is trying to avoid those two disadvantages. 
to avoid those two situations here. So how to avoid this? First is uh, we have two uh, uh, two two uh, two ways. First is called IEDs, uh, random early detection. Random early detection can help us to drop the package randomly. It means uh, so first this ID have the low threshold, up threshold, and uh, the maximum job pro uh, probability. The lower threshold means that uh, the the queue, for example, the queue have 30% of the queue is being used. I will, uh, uh, the devices will start to randomly drop the package, randomly drop the package, okay. And uh, uh, when, the, uh, when the usage of the uh, queue is uh, rise, okay, so uh, the drop rate will become uh, uh, the drop rate will also rise. And after it reached to some up threshold, for example, 80%, 80% of the uh, queue is being used. So the rest of the packet will be all being dropped, all being dropped. Okay, so this is IED. So since we can say the, uh, uh, since the IED is a randomly drop the packet, so the TCP will not synchronized globally. So for example, some packet, this, pa this TCP will be uh, shrink the uh, for a window because this uh, P TCP packet maybe uh, is randomly being dropped first. So th th this packet, this TCP will uh, drop into, uh, w w will shrink the flow window first. And uh, the second TCP traffic will shrink the the TCP uh, for a window later, and the third will drop late, later. So you can say their speed is not same. Their speed is not same. So the TCP is not uh, global synchronized. So the, 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 uh, so the TCP traffic, different t TCP traffic can fully use the network uh, uh, resources. So this is uh, for the IED, for the IED. But the ID also got a problem is uh, uh, because the ID, when it drops the packet is just totally random, the ID. The ID is totally random, which means some packet, for example, the red TCP is a important TCP traffic and the green and the blue traffic, TCP traffic is a non-key TCP traffic. So for the ID, they cannot tell the difference. The ID cannot tell, tell the difference. No matter you are key or not, I will always, randomly drop the traffic. So here comes another technology called the WID, the, the weighted random early, early detection. So the random early de, uh, weighted WID can define different traffic have different lower threshold and upper threshold. For example, the traffic one, it starts drop the traffic when the queue is a 20% full, is 20% full. And the yellow traffic, it starts to drop the packet when the queue is, for example, 30% full, and the, the, the blue is 35% 30, full. Okay, uh, for the uh, low, uh, lower threshold, they can be different. And for the upper threshold also can be different. And the maximum drop rate, Proper, maximum job prop, prop, probability is also can be different. Okay, so, uh, and uh, the job rate as uh, I hope you still remember, the job rate also have the color, green, yellow, and the red. Uh, this green, yellow, and red is uh, nothing to do with the token market, okay. This green, yellow, and red is nothing to do with the token market, okay. This is uh, just uh, uh, trying to, describe uh, the job rate, job priority, okay. So uh, for example, in the DSAP, uh, different uh, value, different uh, color uh, can be defined into different uh, uh, job rate. Okay, you can define that. For example, you can define like AF41, 
the, the, the lowest threshold is at uh, 70%, which means the Q, the F4Q, uh, uh, the usage into 70%, then I will start to drop, and it, the upper is uh, 80, and the maximum drop probability is 60, uh, 70 percent. And for AF42, okay, if the AF4, uh, 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 AF4Q, AF4Q, the usage uh, is uh, uh, more than the 50 percent, and I will start to drop the package uh, for AF42. Okay, so it's like this. So this is WID. So you can say WID, uh, different traffic, different type of traffic ha can have different uh, lower threshold, different uh, upper threshold, different uh, maximal uh, job pr probability. Okay. So this is uh, for the WID. So, uh, so when we use WID, it can, Guarantee there will be no TCP global uh, synchronization, and also can um, can help us to uh, like uh, define like which kind of uh, traffic should have uh, sh should drop first, and which kind of traffic should like drop later. Okay, so this is WID. So the the WID can only be used in outbound direction, uh, di direction. Okay, for the uh, for the uh, congestion avoidance. So as we said before, most of the time, the outbound interface will have the congestion. So uh, the congestion of, of avoidance can be only deployed in the outbound direction here. So this is uh, um, congestion avoidance. Uh, about the configuration we just uh, pass. And a little bit of quiz. Which of the following mechanisms are used by the queues? to protect uh, uh, the discussed, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to proactively discard the package. Okay, so we can use the WID and ID uh, to do that. Okay, okay so uh, summary, we pass. So let's uh, look at the question for the uh, WID. Uh, for the uh, con congestion avoidance, so here some uh, uh, some 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 teacher ask for having a deal to understand it better. How fast the TCP sliding window can be reduced in matter of the seconds or of the minutes? Uh, sliding the window can be reduced in matter of the seconds or minutes. Uh, uh, based on my understanding, based on my understanding, uh, it, it based on like uh, as as I remember, it's uh, the second level. But uh, about that, I need to uh, double check. For uh, as I uh, based on my understanding, the uh, when TCP trying to uh, adjust the uh, the the, uh, the flow window, it is a second level. Okay, it is second level. But about that, I need to do the double check. Okay, so let's uh, uh, move to the the fifth part. Fifth part is the country management uh, technology. So uh, the congestion management uh, is also trying to deal with the congestion problem. So when when the package uh, go into the queue. Which means this packet is not being dropped by the uh, by the WID by the congestion avoidance. The packet is going to the queue, so the packet cannot be waiting in the queue forever. We need uh, to forward out to the packet. We need a scheduling the queue. We need a scheduling queue to forward the packet. So this is the concept of the congestion management. Congestion management basically is uh, just doing scheduling to let certain queue to forward the packet out first. Certain queue need to wait a while. Okay, this is a congestion management. So, so you can see the congestion management basically is uh, like uh, uh, 
how how is the packet leaving the queue? Leave a queue. Okay, this is congestion avoidance. So first is uh, what is Q? What is Q? Q actually is a, it's not a buffer actually. It's a, not a buffer. It's a, uh, how do I say this? It's a, it's a, you can consider this as a, some line, some line. And uh, in, in this line, different packets, they will hold a number, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so, um, so the the devices uh, the packet actually the devices will be uh, put this packet in a memory in a buffer, okay, and the Q actually is what we call uh, um, in a logical way we can call it indica uh, in indicator, okay, the 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 Q actually is an indicator, and uh, uh, and the packet actually they, they, they were buffer in the in the memory. So this is a, the, the, the packet, and this is just an indicator. Okay, first packet, second packet, the third packet. Okay. This is a queue. So the queue, how, how to, uh, what, what, what is the roaming of the queue? So for the devices, for, for the Huawei devices, we will divide it, we will name the queue. We divided the, uh, in, each, in each outgoing interface, we have eight queues. From zero to seven, we will have eight Q. Okay, from the eight, eight Q is a CS seven, CS six, EF, F four, three, two, one, and BE. So this is similar with the services class. Hopefully, you still remember what is services class, the inner priority. Okay, so those Q have those eight names and uh, this is uh, the queue. So the devices, the packet, the devices will put the packet based on the packet uh, priority fields, based on the, uh, the, the queue's, field, queue, uh, queue's value, they will put the devices into, uh, put the packet into the different queue. Okay. So once the packet is in the queue, then we need to consider like, uh, uh, how to fold out, how to fold out. Should this queue go forward first or should this queue fold out first? So this will be uh, related to the queue uh, scheduling algorithm. So there will be three types of algorithm. First is a FIFO. FIFO means, uh, for example, I have eight Q. I have eight Q. And uh, the first Q, it came a packet, then I will fold out this packet first. And the second packet, it will go into the third queue and this packet will fold out. And the third packet, it came into the second queue and this will fall out. This is FIFO. And we also have another two algorithm. One is a strict priority SP, another is a WFQ, weighted fair queue. Okay, as we said, the FIFO, they actually, uh, no matter the packet is uh, going to the first queue or second queue, going to a CS7 or CS6, those different queue, it doesn't matter. As long as it is, uh, uh, came into this, going to, no matter which queue you are going to, it will go into the queue first, it will leave the queue first. Okay, so this will go, go, uh, put us a problem that maybe this packet, when it is going to, this is seven Q first, but I do uh, not want uh, this Q being scheduled. Do not want this Q for the packet first. So the FIFO cannot fulfill this requirement. The FIFO basically means I do not do any control. I do not do any scheduling. Okay, so the second algorithm uh, is called uh, the SP, the strict priority. The strict priority like this. The strict priority, this algorithm can, can, uh, uh, can help us to define the Q. We can define Q into three priority, high priority, middle priority, and lower priority. The higher priority Q can forward out the packet first. 
And if the, the pro high, higher priority queue is empty and I will forward the middle priority queue. And the middle priority queue is empty and I will forward the lower priority queue. This is SP. So we, we can put a lot, the most important packet into a high priority queue. Okay, so this can fold out first. Uh, but uh, the SPA trigger got a little bit of problem is that uh, uh, if the high, higher priority queue always have problems, I always have the packet, always have packet. The middle and the lower priority queue cannot forward any packet. So here's a little bit of problem for the SP. And uh, there's another scenario for the SP is that if I have two queues, they are all be set into the same priority. For example, I have two queues, Q1 and Q2. And they are all, uh, uh, both of the queue, those two queues are using the SP algorithm to scattering. scattering. And those Q1 and Q2, they are all low priority SP. Okay, they are all low priority. And if we use the SP algorithm, which queue should forward out to the packet first? And uh, in the SP, it's working like this way. If two priorities, they are, if two queues, they are in the, like, they are, the, the priority is the same, they were doing the FIFO. For example, the packet, the first packet is uh, came into the Q1, I will fold out. The second packet is going to the Q2. Since they are, have the same priority, although they are using the SP algorithm, but, but they have the same priority. So second, uh, came in packet into the Q2, then the second packet will fall out. Okay, so if between the same priority queue, if we're using an SP, they will use an FIFO. Okay. Another is a WFQ. WFQ is trying to solve the problem that SP facing because SP, if you got high priority, the, the packet will always for uh, if if you got uh, the queue in uh, high priority, if you got a packet in the high priority queue, the, the, those packets will always fold out, and uh, those queue can do not have any chance to fold the packet out. So WFQ is working like this, this way. Based on the weight, W stands for the weight. Based on the weight, based on the weight, um, that. Uh, have a higher weight, they have a more chance to fall out. For, for example, at the first, uh, second, since, since this is a 50%, okay. So half the packet, two packet will fall out and then uh, one middle priority, one lower priority, it will fall out like this. Okay, you can see it like this. And if the high priority queue is empty, is empty, then, uh, because this middle and the lower is 25-25%, uh, so, so they will forward out one packet, middle, one packet, low, one packet, middle, one packet, low, forward like this. And if the middle uh, priority queue is, uh, do not have any packet inside, then later all the low priority queue will, will forward the packet out. Okay, so this is WFQ. Uh, and uh, uh, so, and uh, actually, uh, uh, so for the Huawei devices, we actually have uh, three type of queue. They are using the different algorithm. First, we call the PQ type. Okay, the PQ, this type of queue, they are using the SP uh, algorithm. The WFQ use the WFQ algorithm. The LPQ queue, this type of queue, they were using also using the SP algorithm. Hmm. Okay, so between the PQQ, WFQQ and the LPQQ, those three type of Q, between them, between three, those three type of Q, how, how is the devices doing scattering? It will working like this way. First, it will forward the PQ this type of queues packet, okay. For example, we know we have seven, eight queues in the Huawei outgoing interface. Seven, six, this is for the PQ. Five, four, 
three, this is for the WFQ. Two, one, zero. This use, those three Q is being used as an LPQ type Q, okay? So when doing the folding, it will be working like this. First, the devices will try to fold the seven and the six Q packet because this six and the seven we will define those two Q is a PQ type Q. And in the PQ Q, you can set the seven has higher priority, six has low priority. So the seven packet, seven Q, the packet in the seven Q will be fold out first. If the seven Q is empty, I will fold out the number six Q. Okay, after seven and six, those two Q is all fold out. The PQ type Q is empty, then I will fold the WFQ. I'll fold the WFQ. So the WFQ based on the weight, so they will be like uh, uh, fold out like uh, uh, in, in a round robin way, like, like based on the weight. Okay, based on the weight. And after the WFQ is empty, I will fold the LPQ, the LPQ. The LPQ type of Q also is using the SP scheduling. So which means, for example, this have high priority, this have middle priority, this have lower priority. So after all those Q is, is empty, I will forward the two Q, number two Q first, and forward the number one and forward in zero. It's like this, okay. So there are three types of Q for the uh, devices and how, how, how do they do the forwarding. And also for the condition ma management, only for the outbound direction, outbound direction. Okay, uh, until this con condition management, until now we basically uh, complete the normal queues. Okay, so let's do a little bit of review that uh, uh, for the queues processing, how, how is that? package uh, how is the queues to processing the package okay uh, uh, let's look at processing first then we answer some certain question so uh, the uh, the queues processing is like this first the traffic came into the devices the devices do not know like which traffic is what what traffic is what it, whether it's a video voice or data the devices don't know do not know so they will go through the traffic classification first. Okay, we're trying to classify the traffic. They were trying to classify the traffic based on the five tuple, which means the south destination IP, south destination ports, the pre, uh, protocol, those kind of five tuple, or maybe based on the exp uh, 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 dot 1p, uh, DSAP, those kind of value based on either either this or this. They, if you based on this, it calls a mounting, uh, uh, mountain field uh, 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 classification. If you based on this, it causes a BA classification, okay. No matter you based on what, it will be classified into a different type of traffic. Then the devices, if you configure the CAR, so based on the token market you set, some packet will be dropped, some packet will be received. And it will, it will go into the remarking if you configure the remarking. That some, for example, if you use a five tuple to define the traffic, to classify the traffic, then you need to give this packet some DSAP value or some ESP value. Okay, so this is remarking. After remarking, they will check in the table, the looting table, MAC table, those kind of table, or maybe uh, go through the traffic filter, those kind of things. Okay, then def to define like where should I go out, which interface I should go out. So under each outgoing interface, there will be eight Q. By default, there will be eight Q. Okay, so the packet will not directly go into the queue. It will not directly go into the queue because if we directly go into the queue, we, we will facing some problem of the 
uh, TCP uh, global synchronization, or, or, or maybe like uh, um, uh, so, so, some some uh, uh, so, some important packet might be dropped. So we need to go through the congestion avoidance to decide <coughs> whether this packet is allowed going to the queue or not, whether I should uh, randomly drop it or not, I should, or maybe I should uh, directly put into the queue. Okay. So the congestion avoidance do not avoid the congestion; it avoid the result for the congestion, the consequence for the congestion. Okay. Then when it going to the queue, the packet is waiting here, and waiting the congestion management those tools to do the scheduling to ask them to allow them to fall out. Okay, we can we can use like the PQ, uh, WFQ or LPQ to WFQ. Or LPQ to to decide whether this queue should go out first or maybe this queue should go out first. Okay, this is congestion management, and after that, after scheduling, the packet will go out. And when it go out, if you configure the 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 traffic shaping, the GTS, the tools call it GTS. If we configure the traffic shaping, then the it based on the token bucket, it based on token bucket. Packet, it will decide whether during this time the packet should, is allowed to go out or not. If it is al al not allowed to go out, the traffic shipping will put into the buffer, which means it will put back into the queue and waiting for the next scheduling, then forward out. Okay, so this is the whole processing of the queues. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, uh, check some question. Here's uh, some uh, teacher asked, do queues exist only for physical interface, also for logical interface or both? And the default queue setting is always the same. It can always be configured differently. Okay, let's ask answer this question one by one. Uh, first is, uh, uh, do Q exist for the physical interface, also for the logical interface, for, for both? Uh, for both of them, you will have the the queues. But if you put the queues in the logical interface, we actually call it the H queues, the hierarchical QS. I will, uh, we will talk immediately later. We will talk immediately. And the second question: By default, Q setting is always same. Uh, default queue setting is always the same. What does that mean? Uh, if you do not set the queues, if you do not do the configuration, it will be same. I hope this is what you ask. And the last question is that it can always be configured differently. Uh, of course, different uh, devices, different uh, interface, uh, even different uh, logical interface, you can configure differently. As, as we said that uh, the uh, DS uh, model of the queues is very flexible. Okay, slide. Okay, about configuration, we just pass uh, quiz. Uh, how many queues are there on the interface? Eight. Uh, mountain question, uh, which of the following is a queue scaling technology? Uh, PQ. WFQ and uh, FRFO. WID is not. Uh, summary part. And uh, last, let's let us introduce the HQs a little bit. HQs. Okay. Uh, so first, uh, the HQs is uh, not widely used. At first, most of the time it will be used in the large enterprises and uh, for the ISP, it will use uh, the HQs. Uh, small uh, enterprises normally will not use that. It is uh, difficult to understand and uh, there's no requirement. So uh, for the queues, there's some limitation. Because we know for the normal queues, for each interface, we only have eight, uh, only have eight queue. So if we have Different. If we're facing different requirements, maybe the eight Q is not enough. For example, we 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 maybe have like fourteen different traffic, 
and those traffic also always need to be deal separately. So 8Q is not enough. So what should you do with that? The normal way, one way is, uh, okay, those four, 14 traffic, you classify them into eight type, then you use the queues. But by some scenario, they will got problem. So we need to use eight queues. Okay. We can directly look at this. The eight queues can work in like this way. The eight queues have three level queue, three level queues. Flow queue, subscribe queue, and the pod queue. Okay. So the flow queue most time will be define the traffic for different tenant. And the sub, the level two, the sub subscriber queue, or or some always uh, uh, most of the time will be used to define the tenant. Okay. And the sub interface queue, or the, the, the pod queue, which can put into the sub interface, in, into the kernel interface, uh, this uh, pod queue basically will, will, be, will be used to, 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 to define the, the, the sub interface or kernel interface, those, those interfaces. Okay. So the HQ actually is not that difficult. Is it just a, a multiple level of queues? Okay. So for the level, level three flow queue, as we said, it most, most time will, will, will be trying to use, will be used to define the uh, application of the traffic into the tenant. So in this tenant, okay, different traffic, different services, they may be have different uh, uh, like uh, uh, priority. And in this flow queue, uh, Level three flow queue, you can do the queue scheduling. You can use PQ, WFQ, you can do that. And uh, then those traffic went forward out. It will go into the level two, the subscribe queue. Those subscribe queue, most time will be uh, will, will defined by the tenant. Like each tenant, they will have one level two queue. Okay, we'll have one level two queue. Uh, so, uh, so between the different tenants, like uh, we, we, we maybe have a lot of uh, eight level two queue, right? Between the different tenants, some tenant maybe ha is a golden tenant, some is silver, uh, some is a VIP, okay? Some is a just normal tenant, some is a VVIP tenant. So between those tenants, you, you also can do the PQ and WFQ to decide which package should fold out first. Okay. And then when it go out, we may be going to a sub, sub interface. This sub interface one, sub interface two. Between the different sub interface, we can only do the round robin. Uh -uh. Okay. We, we can only do the round robin, which means no wait, just a round robin. Okay. And for the HQs, we also can do the traffic shaping. Okay, uh, li like uh, uh, how many packages to go out. Okay, we, for each different uh, 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 services, what, what is the speed? And for the different tenant, what is speed? For the different sub interface, what is speed? Okay, we, we also can do the traffic shaping. And also we can do the uh, the, 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 the congestion avoidance. So for the level, level three flow queue, we can do the WIED or tail drop. Okay, but for it, uh, when the packet going through the level two or maybe the level two queue going to the level one, we can only do the tail drop. Okay, this is for the HQs. Here is some example. Uh, this is a very common example that uh, um, like uh, uh, if you are you are you are the family and uh, you wanted to rent some uh, uh, rent some uh, internet services from the ISP, uh, the ISP actually will provide some different services. Like uh, you can rent the VOIP, you can buy the VOIP ser services, IPTV services. The HSI is uh, uh, like uh, the high-speed internet. These services. 
Okay, so different services. Uh, you, we, uh, the, the ISP can use HQs to define different services. Okay, uh, view IP, since this, this is a voice, should fold out first. IPTV, maybe priority will be second. And the internet, maybe, well, the priority will be much lower. And uh, we maybe have different family, family A, B, C, and family A might be the golden user, this is silver user, okay. And this might fold out first. And in the, in the building, maybe you have different floor, or maybe you have different block, and uh, uh, between different building, different block, different floor, you can use a level one particle to like fold out. Okay, different uh, uh, floor of different block, uh, they can, they maybe is, uh, use different uh, sub-interface. So this is HQs. So here are some uh, configuration. Okay. We, we use a traffic policy. We, we use a traffic policy. Okay. About configuration, um, we, we will pass. You, you guys can uh, check after the course. Okay, let's, let's look at the quiz for the HQs. First, uh, HQs cannot uh, distinguish the user or services. Uh, this is uh, false. Because uh, HQs can have three level, uh, the flow, flow queue, uh, sub, uh, scrap queue, uh, pod queue, so we can uh, distinguish the user and uh, the services. And what are the three types of the HQs queue? As we said, flow, sub, script, uh, and uh, pod. Okay, so uh, basically this is uh, the, uh, the whole slide of the uh, queues. Uh, any question? Uh, hello? Hello, can you hear? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, so uh, if there's a hello, can you hear? For the question, let's uh, take uh, yes. a rest. Uh, let's take yes, one, hour rest, uh, one hour rest. And hello, we hello, back hello. One hour. hello, hello, can you hear? Oh, it's uh, oh, wait a moment. There's some someone asked the question. Let me answer the question first. Uh, uh, there are some teacher uh, ask uh, Q's mechanism work in the control plane, forwarding plane, or both? Uh, uh, the, the Q's will be working in the uh, uh, forwarding plane. Forwarding plane. Okay, it's not a, 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 a control plane. So which means the packet will not go into the CPU, uh, only in the ASIC or uh, MPU. Uh, a chip can process uh, uh, can can uh, can 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 deploy the queues. So forward in play. Okay. And uh, any other question? Uh. Lab guide, uh, I guess it is not. For the lab guide, no. Uh, because uh, um, for, for the queues, you, uh, you have the idea it will be okay. And we actually hey, put the queues uh, lab in the HC IPSD1, that, that course. So, so this lab, this queue in the HCIE is not the uh, 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 most important part. So we will, we do not put the queues lab. So basically you have an idea, it will be okay. Like how to do the configuration, uh, not so important.
Okay, any, 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 anyone have any other question? Does Qs will taking lab exam? Uh, it's not being decided yet. So I cannot uh, answer this question. Yeah. It's not being decided. Uh, okay, here's another question. Normally, my trainees ask me for to demonstrate Q's work here as an example. What should do you suggest me to do then as long as there are, there's no lab guide? Uh, okay, so for the Q's actually, uh, a lot of, uh, Trainees, they are uh, got a little bit confused, like about the uh, uh, the, the, the the cues. Uh, so for that, uh, first, uh, I uh, hear some like uh, um, comparison uh, guide here, and uh, like if you really wanted to, um, like a. Uh, tell them like do the demonstrate for them. Uh, you can download, uh, you, you can use the, the lab guide in the HCIP, they come SDY. Inside the HCIP they come SDY. In that uh, course, they, there will be a lab guide for the queues. But because uh, for the IE, uh, you can see there's a lot of topic and uh, uh, some topic, uh, if, if it is uh, not so important, uh, we, we just uh, skip the lab because there's no, no enough time. Okay, so if you just want to demonstrate, it, it, you can download the lab guide for, for the SD1 course. Okay, any other question? Three color, red, green, yellow. Okay. Um, yes, there's a, uh, this part is a little bit uh, one job by color. Okay. Uh, let me go back to that, that one. Okay, uh, the color mean, uh, means this, uh, that uh, um, the, the color actually, it's, it's just, uh, how do I say this? When you do the configuration for the 29, uh, okay, this one. Okay, uh, the color means this. When we, uh, when we do the, um, how do I say this? For example, I have the package, uh, the DSAP value is F4142 and 43, right? By default, automatically, the devices will, will give the AF41 color green, give the AF42 color yellow, AF43 color red. This, uh, for any devices, okay, it is like this, for the any devices. For the AR, there's uh, no concept uh, for color, but uh, it's not big different, okay. For any, you, you will have color. So green, yellow, and red. And for now, for, the, for now, when, when you do the mapping, devices only give the packet color, but it do not give, uh, it do not, uh, uh, what, I say, what I say, it do not guarantee, it, it does not mean that the AF41, the green color, uh, uh, job rate, it, it do not uh, means this green job rate is a uh, must be higher than yellow or must be higher than red. It just gives the color, that's all. It just gives the color. So what is the color used for? Okay, later when we do the, when we do the, uh, oh, as a slide, when we do the, the congestion, avo uh, congestion avoidance. Okay, when we do the congestion avoidance, Okay, when we do the congestion avoidance, we can set 
we can set that the red color drop rate is what? Yellow color drop rate is what? Green color drop rate is what? That's all. That's what is the color used for. Okay, what is the color used for? Okay, so this color is only like, a, it's like a mark. It's like an inner mark. Okay, the, the red color, you set the job rate, green color, you set job rate, yellow color, you, you set job rate, that's all. And just uh, by, uh, normally, we would define the green color uh, have uh, like uh, they, they are most important package. So uh, the, the, the job priority, the, the job priority will be low. Okay, because uh, the upper threshold, the green color is uh, start very late, right? Uh, the, the, the lower, how do I say this? The, the lower uh, threshold will start very late and the uh, upper, and the, 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 the jump priority will also be very low. So you can say, red color, it will have higher, pro, higher chance to be dropped. Yellow, you should see like this. If the packet color is red, the drop rate should be set in a high rate. Yellow color packet, the packet rate should be set into the middle, uh, uh, in, into the, uh, the middle chance. And the green color package, the job uh, pro probability sh should set it into the lower chance. It should be like this. So as defined that if you find any uh, definition for the AF43, AF3323, this three means that those kind of packets have more chance to be dropped. But this is all set by people, all set by people. But normally, all the people, people should set in this way. Okay, red, high chance to be dropped. Yellow, middle chance. Green, low chance to be dropped. So this is a, means color. Okay, color just a color. It when we do the configuration, it will be easy easy for us to do the configuration. Like uh, green, job rate is what, yellow job rate is what, red job rate is what. That's all. It's not uh, something special. Yeah. Uh, is there any training document uh, doc, uh, document that describes the queues uh, configuration via the NCE IP instead uh, of MQC? Uh, okay, second is uh, for the NCE IP in the HCIE, the, you were only facing the, the NCE campers. This is the only uh, controller you're gonna face. In. So the NCE IP controller we will not put into the HCIE because the Prices will be very high for the NCEIP. And uh, like uh, for, for, for other help, if, if they buy the NCEIP, uh, I mean, the investment will be too high. So we, we do not put the NCEIP. But if you wanted to know the how to use the NCEIP, how to do the queues in the uh, NCEIP, another course also in the HCIP, date, date come. One, uh, this course, in, inside this course, you will find uh, the detail about the NCIP. Uh, so which means there is a training documentation. Uh, the Air Force 3 is marked for the voice and uh, video, but no. Uh, voice and the video, uh, let me check.
Okay, let's see. Uh, voice. Uh, yes. Yeah, should it be right? It should be right. Uh, and. Uh, There's no problem. What, what is it? This picture is a uh, okay. You, you can say EF43. The drop rate is high. Drop rate is high. And EF4, EF3 is marked for voice and video. A uh, voice most of the time will be marked as a EF because a EF uh, most of the time will be defined as a what do you call it? the pro, uh, the uh, will, will be put into the will be defined as uh, the PQ, PQ type, the, the, uh, the voice. So for the voice, they actually do not have the concept of drop rate. Because for the drop rate, this drop rate this only existed in the WFQ. Because WFQ, you need weight, right? You, you, you need a, in WFQ, you, you, you need to wait then forward out. So during that time, there will be drop rate. But for the voice, you always should be forward out first because voice is uh, latency sensitive. So in, in this picture, you can see the voice is EF. And in active video, uh, why it can put the low rate? For my understanding, it is like this. Right now, the video nowadays, it is not, you can see there's a stream video and an in interactive stream video the the video right right now it can buffer in the in the client in, in the client as uh, for my understanding so they can have job rate and they will not you can in this picture it's not put into the high to, it is put into the low so this video can be wait a little bit while then hold out but it should not be dropped heavily it should not drop it heavily and about the streaming streaming video, uh, this part I do not uh, 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 learning too much about the streaming video. As a, so, for my understanding, is that, that a streaming video uh, also should be uh, put into the uh, EF. But maybe, maybe the streaming video most of the time is like uh, uh, the camera, right? The, 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 the camera is streaming video. Maybe. That I do not uh, I just guess that stream video bandwidth is taking too much. So maybe they just uh, if I as long as I can see a little bit, it will be okay. But about about this streaming video, I do not understand very well. Uh, okay, there's another question. Is there maybe a standard or uh, industry regulation that find how queues should be deployed? You know, for example, IP local or IP barrier network, or just a best practice? Uh, basically, uh, basically, um, most of the time is a best best practice. Most of the time is best practice, but you can see this picture that uh, uh, the the Louis shared to us this picture. Uh, you also can fo follow follow this. You also can follow this. Uh, uh, it's like this uh, because some some of the uh, Chinese company uh, in their network they also do doing the uh, queues. They also doing the queues. For them, they based on their own traffic. They based on their their traffic uh, priority to define the queues. Uh, some some traffic, for example, uh, there's uh, some uh, in, uh, some electricity company. That, that in, in the electricity company, there are some uh, control traffic to control the, the the station. Those station control traffic. They are always put into the uh, yeah. So so basically uh, the. Uh, uh, latency sensitive, just uh, yeah. And uh, then uh, the AF part, the all the AF part, they they are just uh, not uh, not very high uh, 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 latency sensitive, but uh, they do not want the packet got dropped too much. So you you can put it into the 
AF. AF. And some other traffic, uh, most times they will put into the BE. Uh, this is so far uh, uh, based on uh, the, some Chinese companies. They, they are working like this way. But I guess that, that that is best practice for me, I think. They are based on the uh, surface requirement. So, uh, so I guess maybe, maybe there's a no um, regular definition, uh, the, the industry regulation or something. So far as I know. Okay. Uh, Any further question? Uh, by the way, that uh, queues, uh, it's uh, sometimes it's like, uh, how do I say? Sometimes some, some company like said that the queues is like, uh, it's like a myth. Sometimes maybe it works. Sometimes maybe it not. So when they deploy queues, they, they, they were thinking queues as a, some, some, some guarantee that uh, hope that queues can solve some problem for them. Most of company is like that. Yeah, because uh, normally if, if the bandwidth is not uh, enough, most time they will expand the bandwidth. Okay, QC is just for them. It's just a, uh, a short time guarantee that uh, to 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 guarantee certain time uh, services. Okay, any uh, any further question? Okay, so let's take a 30 minutes break and we will come back later.